second, everybody. I'm back from my trek across the Minecraft tundra in my search of those new dogs in Minecraft. You know, the new ones that kill you. You see, the joke is I'm actually talking about polar bears, not dogs. Hi, I'm Quiet, and I want to talk to you about nicotine. But anyways, you probably have all heard about this new trend flooding around Twitter and in general where people just make their cat be in the poster for Captain Marvel in place of the cat, <clears throat> sorry, Florkin, that was on the actual promotional material. It's quite cute if I do say so myself. Uh, that's not the topic of the video, it's just cute, so I wanted to point it out. But despite that, I'm going to talk about the movie more. Captain Marvel was decent, nothing spectacular, TBH, but a fun ride nonetheless. We'll probably talk about it more in my podcast, Loud Mouse, with Wild Spartans and FBS Diesel, which you can find a link to in the description below. But enough about that. The actual topic of today's video is another little trend that's also been making the rounds on Twitter and in general, where every time you throw your van's shoes Trademark. into the air, they always end up landing upright like a cat. They might wobble around a little bit, but they always get right the fuck back up like a pubescent teenager. Haha, <laughs> stop right there, old meme. Here's a list of things I've said but really shouldn't have. That. It seems there's been a weird amount of challenges involving throwing stuff recently, like there's this and also that incredibly weird but perfect trend of people throwing cheese at their baby's faces. Everybody has been doing this van shit though. I saw my maze doing it. I saw David Dobrik doing it in the vlog a couple days ago. And of course, as a part of that vlog, he said that if they all managed to land their shoes upright on the next go, that they each got a thousand dollars. Go figure. So, <laughs> I went out and I bought a couple vans. And we're all gonna try. <laughs> we're gonna see if it works at the same time. I'll give you guys each a thousand dollars if on this run, they all flip around. Right. <laughs> You fucking blew it. Yeah, yeah, David Dobrik giving people money, you know how it is. Now with this little trend taking off, and people being able to replicate the experiment at home, showing that there was some truth to the claim, it brings up the obvious question of why. Why does the stupid ass shoe shit work? And I think that it's only necessary that we here on the Quite YouTube channel, as the unofficial, self-titled, unwelcome, unwanted, and unqualified self-appointed meme police of the internet, a title that I'll probably refuse to ever use again, investigate this and get to the bottom of just what makes these shoes tick, specifically into a standing position. And as a result, we'll see if there's something more sinister to it. But to work our way to where we are now and crack this case open like an asshole, I think we need to go all the way back to the beginning first. We need to see where this trend starts from and who the big players in this 3 out of 10 game are. According to multiple sources, the original trend was started by a Twitter user known as at I believe the hype. But the Twitter ad doesn't have the third E in their name and I just now realized that the word believe has three E's in it. But regardless, I can no longer find the tweet they made with the original video that shows the vans always landing upright. But since the Twitter moment for the vans shit says that it was that person who has the proof, I'm gonna go with the idea that it was they who made the first tweet regarding this vans thing. And that they deleted it later for whatever reason or some shit. In the following days though, many people were doing that thing I said they were where they replicated this test and it worked a lot of the times it seems. A bunch of tweets went absolutely mad with numbers. For instance, this one clip by at Bryce McKinney won. It got hella likes and or retweets, whichever you prefer. Take a look. Fucking six pairs of shoes with no cuts in the original video. I put the cuts in there myself because I thought the clapping sound of shoes hitting the ground right after another would be really funny. Uh, I'm not sure if it was because I haven't edited this video yet while recording. What's the verdict on that one, future editor me? <sighs> It wasn't that funny. And there you have it, lads. That's what it is. I totally agree with the statement that was just made that I most certainly just heard. Now, as more and more of these videos came in, they all started getting gathered into one place under the hashtag Vans Challenge or just the Vans Challenge. In addition to that, news publications were picking the challenge up and making articles on it, ensuring that your boomer ass parents would ask you about it when you got home from school. And then you could grumpily tell them, Dad, you literally just throw the shoes and they stand up when they land. It's not that complicated. And they could ask if you could show them, and depending on the kind of kid you are, you might, but perhaps begrudgingly, and if it worked, they would be all, well, ain't that something, kid. But some of the videos that came out of this in the early days were getting kind of spooky. Take this clip, for instance, by at RxMsta, I don't fucking know. I never know how to pronounce the X in place of fucking vowels. This van's landing right side up shit, scary true, LMAO, thought it, I caught it lacking until the end. English, lads. Okay. <laughs> What the fuck? I'm a fucking hypocrite for calling someone after English, hell yeah. Yeah, that startled breath at the end that you heard, you probably thought it was just Roman gasping in shock or something, but I think it might be something a little more sinister, a little more extra dimensional. 
Perhaps something even demonic. But more on that later, there's some other stuff we need to go over first. We had those butt fucks who fancied themselves as funny cunts doing what funny cunts do. Like this guy who was simultaneously not Brandon and only Brandon at the same time over here. The hashtag Vans challenge didn't work. But guess what? Instead of the Vans shoes, it was a literal band that flipped over. And that shit didn't flip back over to its wheels. Case closed, everybody. Go on home. We also had this guy with the flipped over van saying it didn't work. Genius one, that is. And wait a second, wait a minute. Here's another guy with a flipped over van. Uh -huh. Oh my god, what a funny joke. You had people pushing the limits of the challenge to see if the vans could pick themselves back up after all kinds of different falls, including falling down a flight of stairs. The thing that even managed to take down Jennifer Lawrence at the 2013 Oscars. <laughs> And in addition to people trying this with Vans, some people said that the challenge wasn't just contained to that type of shoe. I saw all sorts of shoe brands being tossed about in the conversation and also into the stratosphere. I do have some personal favorites out of the list though. Let's take a look at some of them, shall we? First off, we have people saying Crocs work the same way. An interesting but unique one to start with, I think. Some would say that the Crocs were even better than the Vans and are more accessible to the general public because of their often cheaper price and the fact that they are lighter and easier to throw. That way, those with less muscles can then throw them easier. And I believe that this angle of thought has some merit, so I've decided to call this method pussyfooting. Because we're talking about shoes that you wear on your feet and you guys are insisting on pussyfooting around the actual thing. Come to think of it, this video would be a really good one to hide jokes about sniffing toes into while editing. Uh, I'm just gonna leave you with the fact that I said that sentence and move on now. My personal favorite variation of the trend though was this very specific little gem here mostly because of the very satisfying Yes, the pain and suffering of others in a video format has made me laugh yet again, what's new? But now that we've done our little stint on the history and spread of this van throwing challenge, I think it's high time that we A, start going into why just this trend was able to work, and B, make fun of the other people who weren't cool enough to be a fake skater kid with vans to participate in this challenge. I think I'm one of the few people who have never owned vans. Now I can't throw them and see if that thing works like Twitter said it would. Well, Mango Juice, aka at Gold Packs Abs, weird name on both but nonetheless, I would like to say I am very sorry for your loss, and also I would like to say to the audience, haha, let's point and laugh because he doesn't have bands like us cool kids on the playground. Hell yeah, I have clothes that you don't. Haha, <laughs> get fucked over something trivial, bitch. I'm sorry, guys, that was very mean and you have my sincerest apology. But the most prominent tweet I saw explaining why the vans always stand upright came in the form of a tweet from one Sarah McGonagall. That's correct, the current day headmaster of Hogwarts herself. Here is what she had to say. Everyone shocked that vans always land right side up are seemingly forgetting they are skate shoes, which are specifically designed with a particular weight and balance to help you land as often as possible. Like dude, that's how shoes work. She also had this weird animatronic reaction image that I struggled to characterize with words, so instead Instead, I'm just gonna express it by nabbing the image and putting it on the green screen. Damn, what a weird image. Don't like looking at that much at all. Damn, dude, people out here just trying to have some simple harmless fun. Bet you have some scientific explanation for the water bottle flip too. Did it occur to you that I'm also trying to provide harmless shoe fun facts because I too am very bored? No, I didn't because you didn't fucking phrase it like that at all. Everyone shocked that vans always land right side up or seemingly forgetting that they are skate shoes? Like, dude, that's how shoes work? W w where's the fun fact part? I don't fucking- Oh, and then the unimpressed anime animatronic to show your disappointment. Wow, great. Just fun facts. Shut the fuck up. Now, I think that while Sarah's theorizing as to the science behind the band's challenge is very interesting, I don't think it's the truth. I really don't think she's quite on the mark at all. In fact, Sarah, I very much doubt your motivations. I doubt that you even believe what it is that you're tweeting. I think that you are in on something bigger. Something to help spread misinformation, to help hide the bigger picture, and more importantly, the truth from the public. I mean, as a member of the wizarding world, you would very well have incentive to hide the effects of magic phenomena from the common muggle folk. Your use of that animatronic reaction image certainly isn't helping your case. But let's back it up real fast before I go off the Minecraft roller coaster rails even more than I already have. If you go to the hashtag Vans Challenge on Twitter and sort by latest, you'll find a lot of tweets like this one. Further refuting the hashtag Vans Challenge, y'all really out here convincing me to throw my shoes around for nothing, and the nothing has four Gs, and attached was this clip. 
from earlier in the video, in both the clip where somebody shoved the shoe rack of vans down the stairs, not all the vans stood back upright, but this also happened in the David Dobrik clip I used. Not all the vans were able to land upright when they were all thrown at once, and it made me notice that the more vans that are being thrown at once in a vicinity close to each other, the more likely it seems that not all of them will stand back up. Now if you recall back to even further in the video, and yes, all of this will be on the test, you'll remember that I said that out of the people participating in the Vans Challenge, some of them were my mates. And the one that's important to mention here is the one and only FPS Diesel. Y'all ever notice how like you throw Vans and then they always land right side up? See? Look, look at that. I'll, I'll do it again. See? What kind of voodoo bullshit is that? Now the reason Diesel is important is because of the kind of person he is. The kind of energy it is that the man exudes. That of hell energy. The proof is in the pudding, lads. If you go to his merch shop, it shows you all you need to see. He's got three different designs that say just the word edgy on them. And one of them is covered in blood, and another one has a fucking pentagram on it. Not only that, but Diesel has a different design of a shirt where it's a drawing of Diesel placed in a pentagram. If that wasn't enough to convince you that FPS Diesel is a demon in human form, then this next bit most certainly will. In the voice casting process for the Devil May Cry series, every time, Capcom has taken a progressive approach where they hired actual demons to voice act the demon enemies in the game. And each individual enemy had its own demon voice actor. And guess who was one of them? That's right. FPS Diesel. And it's because of this demon status that Diesel was one of the people whose vans landed upright without fail. You see, this is because my theory is that the van's ability to always stand up when landing is derived from the hell energy. Yeah, that's right, the shit that was in the last Doom game. And it's what allows them to truly defy the laws of physics. Diesel even remarked at the end of the video he made, what kind of voodoo bullshit is this? But that was just to throw us off. He knows exactly why it works. He is literally one of the physical anchors of hell energy in the physical plane by voice acting for Capcom. Disclaimer, as of writing this video, FPS Diesel has not actually done any work for Capcom to my knowledge, and this whole hell energy slash man's being demonic bit is just a funny hoo hoo haha -ha and not real. Please don't fucking sue me. That's also why when so many vans are being thrown at one time in an attempt to land them all upright, it's less likely that they all will, because it takes so much energy concentrated in one place to make them all defy the rules of the moral plane. It's just a lot harder to pull off. So there you have it, lads. Now that you have the information on what the Vans Challenge really is, what do you think it means? The world may never know. But anyways, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to drop a like, and if you're new, subscribe. Uh, speaking of Diesel, if you haven't seen his videos, be sure to check them out. They're actually really fucking good. Uh, his link will be in the description below. Speaking of Diesel, I have a podcast with him and Wild Spartans called Loud Mouse, and we upload one new episode every week on Saturdays. We'll probably talk about Captain Marvel this week there, but we're up on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Uh, you can check out my merch at quayshop.com. I've been streaming on Twitch pretty much daily at this point, uh, but I might not be for the next few days. We'll see. Uh, but if you want to see when I'm going, Live, it's twitch.tv slash quiet. If you want to support the channel a little more directly, you can do so by clicking that join button next to the subscribe button and donating five dollars a month to get things like custom badges and custom emotes. It's totally optional, but it helps out the channel and it is much appreciated. You can follow me on Twitter at quite and on Instagram at quite.png. Links to both of those in the description below. And lastly, I also have a Discord server. Link to that in the description as well if you're interested. Anyways, this has been quite, and I'll see you guys next time.